Time for our next problem. Here we have a right triangle. Uh, the length of this side is called V. The length of this side is called V sub X, V with a subscript X. And the length of the vertical side is called V sub Y, and this angle is called theta. Here's the problem. If you're given V sub X and V sub Y, find V and theta. Given V sub X and V sub Y, find V and theta. Please pause the video and try that problem. Most of the problems that we're doing in these videos are problems where I give you numbers and you get a numerical answer. But we have already seen some problems where all you're given is variables and you have to get an answer that's just in terms of variables. Um, so I wanted to, to practice that here. We've already seen how to deal with that when you're given a side and an angle. Well, now here's a problem that just deals with variables where you're given two sides. Remember that the one way to think about this is that we're supposed to pretend that we have been given numbers for V sub X and V sub Y. We're going to pretend we have been given numbers for V sub X and V sub Y and that we're trying to use those numbers to find V and theta. So remember that our final answers will be mathematical expressions, not numbers. Uh, but our final answers will be mathematical expressions, but they have to be expressions that only use the givens, v sub x and v sub y. So when we figure out what v is, we can't include theta in that answer, because theta is not a given. And when we figure out what theta is, we can't use v in our answer, because v was not a given. So we need to figure out v and theta in terms of just these given variables. Uh, and the fact is, most physics courses will require you to be able to solve not just numerical problems, but also variable-based problems. So this is an important skill for your physics course. If you had any trouble with this problem, I hope that your instinct was to try to be more systematic and to make an especially conscious, conscientious effort to use the notation that we've developed. So one notation is that we use asterisks to indicate the initial information that we were given. So in this case, we were given v sub x and v sub y. That's especially useful here uh, because everything is a variable. So without the asterisks, it would be hard to remember which variables we've been given and which variables we're treating as unknowns. Um, all right, and I'm also going to put an asterisk here on the theta. Not because we've been given theta. We have not been given theta. The purpose of this asterisk is just to remind me to focus on this angle. So this asterisk has a slightly different purpose than this asterisk down here. We know it's helpful to use an asterisk to label which angle you're focusing on. Because now that I know that I'm focusing on this angle, I know that the horizontal side should be labeled as adjacent, because it's adjacent to this angle. And the vertical side should be labeled as opposite, because it's opposite to this angle. And clearly, this side is the hypotenuse, which is opposite to the 90 degree angle. Now, these two asterisks are reminding me that we have been given two sides. And we have to find the third side. Well, we know that if you're given two sides, you don't need trig functions to find the third side. You can just use the Pythagorean theorem. Let's write the general formula first. Hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. Now let's plug in. The hypotenuse, we're supposed to use the symbol V. For one leg, we're supposed to use the symbol V sub X. And for the other leg, we're supposed to use the symbol V sub Y v squared equals v sub x squared plus v sub y squared. Now, which of these variables are we trying to solve for? Which variable do we need to get by itself? v. Remember, our goal was to figure out v. Well, it's already almost by itself. The only thing that's left is to get rid of this squaring term. You get rid of a squaring term by doing the opposite. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. If we take the square root of the left-hand side, all that's left is v. But then the golden rule of algebra says that we must also take the square root of the right-hand side. So v equals the square root of v sub x squared plus vy squared. So that's v. We could build that into our sketch. Can we use algebra to simplify this right-hand side? I hope your algebra skills are strong enough to see that you cannot simplify this right-hand side. It might have been tempting, it might have been tempting to say, well, the square root of v sub x squared is v sub x, and the square root of v sub y squared is v sub y. So it might have been tempting to go from here to here, but this is wrong. 
You're not allowed to do that. Um, square roots cannot be separated over addition. Square roots don't work um, nicely over addition. Um, if you have um, a, a sum inside a square root, you can't just take those two square roots separately. Even though that seems natural, it doesn't work. Uh, if you didn't know that, you might want to make a flashcard to help yourself remember that. Anyway, um, there's no way to simplify this square root. This would be wrong. So we have to stick with this as our final answer. Let's make sure this is an acceptable answer. First of all, remember our goal was to get an expression for v. Well, we've done that. And remember that the answer has to include only the givens. It can't include theta, because theta is an unknown. Well, we've accomplished that. Our answer here only involves the two givens, v sub x and v sub y. It doesn't include theta, so this is an acceptable answer for this problem. But you still have another problem, which is we're also trying to figure out what theta is. It might have been a good idea at the beginning to put in question marks. It's very often a good idea to use question marks to indicate what the question is. So we also are trying to find theta. Well, what information are we going to use to find theta? Well, we're going to use the givens. And the asterisks remind us which sides we were given. We were given this side, indicated by an asterisk, and we were given this side, indicated by an asterisk. That is, we were given the adjacent and opposite sides. Well, which trig function would we want to use if we're given the adjacent and the opposite sides? The tangent, TOA. The tangent involves the opposite and adjacent sides, and those are the exact sides that we've been given v sub x and v sub y. So let's use tangent. The tangent of theta is the opposite side over the adjacent, to a. Uh. What's theta? I don't know. What's the opposite side? Well, we were told to use v sub y as the opposite side. And what's the adjacent side? We were told to use v sub x as the adjacent side. Which of these variables are we trying to solve for? Theta. We need to get theta by itself. Well, we have to get rid of this tangent then by doing the opposite. The opposite of a tangent is an inverse tangent. If we take the inverse tangent of the left-hand side, all that's left is theta. But then we're forced to also take the inverse tangent of the right-hand side. You could also call this the arc tangent, if that's your preference. Theta equals inverse tangent or arc tangent of v sub y divided by v sub x. Is this an acceptable answer? Yeah. Uh, we figured out what theta is, and our answer only includes the givens. It only includes v sub x and v sub y. This would not be acceptable if this answer also included v, because v was an unknown. We have to give answers that only use the givens. Well, this answer is just using the givens, so I'll put a box around this. This is a good, acceptable answer. And we'll build that into the sketch. This angle is the inverse tangent of v sub y over v sub x. There is no way to simplify this further. You can't kind of just distribute the inverse tangent over the top and the bottom here. This might have been tempting, but it's totally wrong. You can't do this. Uh, there's no way to simplify this inverse tangent. So we should not do this. This is our final answer. Well, this is another problem where we were given two sides. We've done a lot of problems where we were given two sides. And the only twist here is that in this problem, we weren't given numbers. We were just given variables and told to treat them like numbers. Uh, and it's well worth the time to do this type of problem because most physics courses are going to require you to solve not just number-based problems, but also variable-based problems. Um, so please keep redoing this problem uh, until it's easy for you.